the Bull County History Center describes the Heritage Trail as a destination journey to experience the places, artifacts, and activities that authentically represent the people of Polk County. Polk County's Heritage Trail includes cemeteries, museums, historical markers, historic buildings, schools, houses, and churches, events, and activities miles of natural trails, communities, and most of all, oral histories, the stories of the people who have lived the history of Polk County. And it is my privilege and my honor to introduce to you Bill Braswell, who is commissioner, and he is a man of many, many talents, one of which is he has his little hands in a little bit of agriculture, like blueberries. He is um, an Air Force veteran and a former commercial airline pilot, and Commissioner Braswell is going to tell you about the importance of the preservation of Polk County's history, a little bit about why the commission is dedicated to preserving our history, and will dedicate the Camp Mac Heritage Trail. Please welcome Commissioner Bill Braswell. On behalf of the Board of County Commissioners, it's my pleasure to be with you today to celebrate the debut of Camp Mac Historical Site as part of Polk County's Heritage Trail. Congratulations and thank you to the uh, Camp Mac and Guy Harvey Resort folks for a job well done in promoting and preserving local history. On this site, we have it all. It's authentic Florida at its best. You got the great outdoors, you got fishing, uh, some history, some steamboats, uh, cattle, military history, and, and a lot more. And it's offered in a way that educates, entertains, and ultimately improves the quality of life for our residents. And that's what we're all about. The Polk County Board of County Commissioners recognizes the value of heritage tourism and historic preservation in our county. The Camp Mac historical site combines these two themes in the best possible way. Our next speaker values heritage tourism and historic preservation too. Mark Ellers, the president of Guy Harvey Outdoor Resorts, who sparked the development of this outdoor exhibit. Mark, please come forward and give us a few remarks. Thank you. I do want to uh, certainly uh, welcome all the friends of Polk County history and of course, Camp Mac, a Guy Harvey outpost. Um, I think we cannot let the moment go by from my perspective without a shout out to all the folks who helped bring us together today. First, I have to acknowledge Bertis. Um, all of you all know her uh, boundless uh, energy. Um, it really would not be without her efforts to bring this exhibit to life that we would otherwise be here today. Uh, she has an incredible way to bring life to history, and she's certainly done it here, creating the stories that uh, are the colorful back story to Camp Mac. Obviously, there are a lot of others to thank. The list is very, very long. Uh, we've got uh, heirs of the pioneer families who settled here at Camp Mac. We've got uh, historians and researchers who helped bring all of these stories together as you see them on the display boards. We have the artisans who help fabricate the boards, lay out all the graphics, install the boards, etc. Of course we have our elected representatives who supported this whole initiative and Citizens Bank who helped make a financial contribution to defray some of the costs of actually making the installation. But of course, you know, a big shout out goes to the owners of Camp Mac um, we are partners of theirs in the context of a license agreement, uh, but the true owners are a brother and sister uh, family from Winter Park, uh, Brad Miller and his sister Melissa yeah. Doherty. Bertus asked me to make some comments to elaborate a little bit on Guy Harvey Outpost Resorts and how we came to Camp Mac, uh, because of course we're mostly known for our activities in the saltwater space. Um, so I think it's probably best to start with a little bit about Guy's background. Um, sort of like Mark Twain, you know, he grew up as a kid enjoying life, fishing, playing with his friends, not on the Mississippi, but in the crystal clear blue waters of an island called Jamaica. And uh, unlike steamboats for Guy, his steamboats were actually the large blue marlins and the other wild marine life that traveled past Jamaica um, in those unseen currents that surround the island. And really, as he grew up, 
with his love and for fishing and diving, he had an artistic gene and he basically taught himself how to, to paint and draw. And really he used that skill set to ultimately bring his passion for marine life to others to share as a true artist. He has a PhD in biology, spends most of his time traveling the world. Well, he's not really going anywhere these days because I don't think he can get out of Grand Cayman where he currently lives. But he's traveled the oceans, traveled the world, uh, researching the oceans, which as many of you can appreciate is today still mankind's most unknown habitat, most unexplored uh, resource in the world. And it's really a lifetime commitment to a body of research on pelagic fish uh, that he has committed himself to, especially the iconic blue marlin, which is sort of his signature fish. And it's really this body of research that has been instrumental in, in really contributing to the passage of many conservation and sustainable fishing initiatives around the world. Uh, one such uh, research accomplishment was the Guy Harvey Ocean Foundation, which is based at Nova Southeastern down in Fort Lauderdale, actually pioneered the uh, DNA mapping of sharks. And that research has now been used worldwide to basically control illegal shark finning and the unfortunate decimation of that fishery which is very important to the health of the world's oceans. But like many of us today, Guy is worried about the health of the oceans and the water quality uh, that feeds the oceans. Uh, and as a consequence, you know, he's moved his attentions on shore, if you will. You know, the list of concerns is long. It's, it's everything you can imagine. It's plastics, it's chemicals, it's sewage, it's the kinds of issues that many of us here in Polk County around the Kissimmee River are familiar with because sadly, uh, all of these contaminants ultimately flow down the river and make their way out to the oceans. So protecting the, re protecting the rivers, protecting the estuaries, protecting the inland marine habitats is a very, very important priority for all who take any kind of interest in protecting the water quality of the oceans. And really it was really that sort of sentiment that brings us here today. In order to protect anything though, you have to establish a value. And that value ultimately really has to lie in an emotional appreciation. And that really brings you back full circle with Guy and his art. Because unlike Mark Twain, he wasn't a writer, but he used his paintbrush to tell stories. He has a library today that probably is pushing 10,000 images. He's uh, authored and produced uh, half a dozen award-winning documentaries. And it, all of these have been for the purpose of educating, inspiring, and at the end of the day, making people have an emotional connection to the oceans and the waters that surround us. But like he says, every picture tells a story. And these images, or how he communicates that emotional connection you know, to the marine resource we live in. Um, his depictions are very, very lifelike. He has an almost near photographic memory. Uh, so as a kid diving, he was able to come up, still today, he can come up and basically draw exactly what he has seen underwater. And as a consequence of that, he's generally in art circles considered to be the John Audubon of marine illustration because of this commitment to accuracy. So he may not be the literary lion of a Mark Twain, but I'm sure he's happy to be known as the art shark of the marine illustration world where clearly he's recognized uh, for his accomplishments in art. But interestingly enough, the truth be known, a couple things about Guy. He will never paint a cartoon fish. Um, again, that goes against his grain for accurate depiction of marine wildlife. And truth be known, he actually prefers to paint flora and fauna over fish, but it's fish that pay the bills. And as he's fond of saying, it takes cash to care. And the artwork, uh, the merchandise, most of which is adorned with, uh, you know, much of his artwork, it's the sale of that merchandise that funds the Guy Harvey Ocean Foundation 
and in turn funds the research and the grants that are given out on an annual basis around the world you know, to further the research that's near and dear to his heart. But so enough about Guy. I talk about him all the time. Let me talk a little bit about myself and let me talk a little bit about Guy Harvey Outpost because that's really what I think is important and brings us together today. I was born alongside a river. It was Louisville, Kentucky, a town once known more for its steamboats than thoroughbreds and bourbon. Or as my mom likes to remind me, well, it's always been known for its bourbon. But I grew up along the Mississippi. Years later, uh, found myself, our family found ourselves down in Louisiana. So I spent my formative years in the swamps and the bayous of Louisiana outside of Baton Rouge. And, you know, that lifestyle, as we're all familiar with, John boats, bass boats, air boats, cane poles, bobbers, who can forget their first Zebco rod, reel and rod? You name it, I did it. That was my freshwater river life. Saltwater life for me came a lot later in my life. And it's really, it's really important to remember that the river connects us all. And, it's, and it provides incredible entertainment, fascination, and mystery. Much like the way Mark Twain, Mark Twain celebrated river life, it's always captivated me. And whether it's the Mississippi or the Kissimmee, all of these rivers, all of these rivers ultimately flow to the ocean. We have a simple inscription in the emblem of our company, Guy Harvey Outpost. The emblem is, from the oceans comes life. Very simple, very true. And it is the essence of what we try to think about as we look for destinations to plant our flag. Five years or so ago, I decided it was time that we take our portfolio of saltwater hotels, beachfront resorts, island resorts, and move inland and follow the lakes and rivers. And being a Florida-based company, not too hard to do that here, obviously, in Florida, and certainly from our base in South Florida, the Kissimmee River, you know, was a key focus of our interest. And so on this journey, you know, we decided we would search out great fishing destinations where we could always find time to fish with family and friends. And we would tell those fish stories that bring us together, share those experience, build those memories with our kids and our families and our friends. And that really, ladies and gentlemen, is the essence of a Guy Harvey outpost, whether it's on a river or whether it's on a beach. Angling is a part of our corporate DNA. Guy is a trustee of the International Game Fishing Association, which was founded by Ernest Hemingway and is the repository of all the fishing records everywhere in the world. Bill Shedd, another co-founder, he's the owner of a company called AFCO. Uh, they are one of the preeminent uh, fishing apparel and tackle companies in the country. And perhaps, uh, certainly in California, considered to be one of the most effective and prominent individual conservation activists today. And then uh, I have another uh, co-founder, Charlie Foreman. Bill and Guy were a little skeptical of my initiative to take us up the river, uh, but not Charlie. Charlie was Guy's original business partner. Actually, it was Charlie who came up with the idea of putting images on t-shirts. Charlie, actually, he's another pioneer family of Florida. He raises buffalo on his homestead up in Ocala, and he really cherishes the old Florida mystique of what you find here in Central Florida. And so much so, he's actually an eminent domain attorney. He practices that to basically protect the interest of landowners when growth comes calling, as it seems to always do here. So it's really with a bit of, if you will, cosmic karma that we took this initiative and we came up the Kissimmee River and we ended here at Camp Mac. You know, whether when you run from Lake Toho down to Lake O and then you branch out to either the Atlantic or the Gulf, it's um, just, it's a, the mythic appeal of the Kissimmee River you know, that original I-95 of Florida uh, that was pioneered by, you know, the steamboat captains of the Kissimmee. 
for the purpose today of enticing travelers, outdoor enthusiasts, and of course, freshwater anglers. And that's another reason, of course, why we're here. Um, we had a couple unsuccessful attempts to plant our flag on Lake Okeechobee. Um, through that process, we ended up meeting Brad and Melissa. We all agreed that this was a unique setting with unique history, certainly in comparison to all the mega resorts in Central Florida and the theme parks. This was authentic old Florida. And most importantly for us in those conversations, Brad and Melissa agreed that the Guy Harvey brand, our commitment to families, our commitment to outdoor entertainment and activities such as fishing, you know, those were the kinds of things that were going to help raise the bar, float the boat higher here at Camp Mac, you know, so that we could travel the unknown waters that lie ahead in any business. And of course, you know, these times have proven those to be certainly challenging. So here we Camp Mac, I mean, we have fallen in line with a long list of others who have come before us. We've got uh, folks who came for survival, they came to conduct commerce, they came to it for merely for reasons of adventure. We had Indians and Indian fighters, pioneers and homesteaders, we had industrialists and pirates. Uh, we had Captain Clay and his brethren steamboat captains, you know, weaving their way through the treacherous winding waters of the Kissimmee. And it's really those spirits that have come before us are never really far away from our thoughts in terms of how we would like to guide and shape, you know, the future of Camp Mac and protect its historical legacy. So for today and all the tomorrows yet to come, to raise the bar, to float the boats higher, that's our goal in being involved with Brad and Melissa and all of you and the staff here at uh, Camp Mac. Uh, we have lots of exciting plans. Our responsibility to the camp, in our opinion, is to attract visitors to this corner of Florida with its unique old Florida heritage, to this particular bend, the Oxbow, the Kissimmee River, and really have those guests of ours bear witness to the really magical beauty that you can find, as we see today, sitting under the shades of these old growth oak trees. For us, it's you know, how to appreciate these ribbons and bows of fresh water, you know, that nourish ultimately our vast oceans as they flow downstream. Um, our goal is to really carve into the minds of travelers and our guests, you know, what this magical place is all about and the importance we all have in protecting the history and the legacy of Camp Mac and this environment. Uh, we are custodians. We are custodians and stewards of a very, very important treasure. And today, this treasure is being put on display. We have a half a dozen, eight, I think, boards that give, give you an insight into various points of time in the history of Camp Mac in this particular area. We've tried to weave together a story that uh, dates back ages and brings you current. I'm hoping that uh, one day our stewardship will be sufficient enough to justify its own display board as we pass the torch, as we all ultimately do, to the next steward of this destination. Uh, so we look back to the history that has made this place special. We look forward to events and, and other attractions and opportunities that we see ahead next year. We'll be launching a big money fishing tournament for all of our bass angling friends. For example, it'll be a four fish uh, series, three qualifiers and a, uh, a shootout. That'll run through the course of the year. Um, we want now to embrace all the great sports that take place here, air boating. Uh, we've sponsored cleanups with the airboat community. Uh, again, whether it's airboating or bass fishing, I've done it all. Uh, it's all great, it's all part of the outdoor experience. But history ebbs and flows, as we all know, just like the rivers and the oceans. Everything has a cycle, everything ebbs and flows. Whether it's a lake 
whether it's an ocean, but from here to there, from fresh water to salt water, or from salt water to fresh water, what we like to always remember is from these oceans comes life, ex vito oceans. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate your attendance. So I just want to say, um, first of all, that I appreciate so much all the effort that went into putting this together. I know it took a year or more um, to get everything together for this beautiful, you know, historic trail. I also want to thank the folks that tell the stories, the people that lived here, the pioneers that came, the authors that have put the books together that we collectively I think it's so wonderful that um, people keep telling the stories of this area. And um, Tom Freeman was my uh, art teacher, so um, and he lived here for, I don't know, 20 years or so. And so he was able to teach me what he knew about Florida landscapes, and I'm really appreciative of that. Also, um, well, we just thank all the people that tell, keep telling the stories of Florida. So, you know, I don't know about you, but sometimes I just wish, I wish I could go back in time and, and just see what it was like to go down this Kissimmee River, you know, especially with Captain Clay Johnson on his boats. Uh, one of his boats he named Rosetta after his two daughters. The other one he named for his uh, lovely wife, Lily. And so um, he was able to take his family with him on the river by naming those boats because they couldn't always go with him. But uh, he was born in 1850 in Illinois and his family moved down to Louisiana. And in 1883, he came to the Kissimmee area and built a house there uh, years later. And that house is still there. You can go see it on Lake Tahoe, just off of Lake Toho over there in Kissimmee. Uh, it's I think it's for sale. If anybody wants to open a museum there, wouldn't that be great? Guy Harvey, maybe, or, you know. Yeah. It's a great, great, beautiful uh, Victorian house. And I heard that the Rosetta sunk there after a hurricane, so maybe there's still remnants uh, buried in the, the sledge over there. Who knows? But like I said, I wish I could uh, go back in the time and uh, ride on that river. So. You know, Captain Clay was also a musician. He played his fiddle. He played his fiddle on his boat for a lot of people and they enjoyed it. So I hope you enjoyed this song today. I'm so honored to be here and very appreciative on the Kissimmee River, sing a song about Captain Clay who, you know, had to wheel his boats along this place right here. So, and over in Shellham, Ocno, you're here and there. wants to be there. My body says I can't. Time won't let me in. My heart is in a rant. So don't hold your breath. Someday it'll all work out. It's just you and me. Maybe this song is all about kiss me now. Oh, kiss me then. Kiss me a while. Kiss me when we go down the old kiss me. Oh, fiddle me a tune, Captain Clay, won't you please? We'll dance at the frolic all night And gaze at the stars and the moon up above And dream of this river so bright Kiss me now, kiss me then Kiss me while, kiss me when we go down Oh, Toho Pacalacas, where you start your run, and where you would turn your lily rose so fair. There 
there's so much to see from your wet tailboat. Storms running in, toss those coins to the air. We gotta head down to Okeechobee. Don't forget the passenger run. We're gonna stop at old man Thomas's orange hammock for a little lighter knot. Shorelines was plentiful as can be. Oh, take me back, please take me back to the old Kissimmee Prairie. Kiss me now, kiss me then, kiss me while, kiss me when we go down the old Kissimmee. Well, my mind starts to wander to back in the day, churning through water, trying to a paddle boat way. Captain Clay brought me candy when I was a child to the dock on the oxbow, that river so wild, tall, slender with a mustache. He looked just like old Mark Twain. He could read the long rivers every crook and turn. You could say he was off the chain. Oh, 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 kiss me now. Kiss me then. Kiss me while. Kiss me when we go down your city. Thank you very much. <laughs>